It was to push back on the governor's corporate tax cut. He wanted to lower corporate tax rates lower than what everyday Virginians pay um, in our taxes, and we, we got that done. That was the number one thing. He was also pushing some other uh, tax cuts, which we didn't think were sort of, well, a good idea. Um, we ended up, they ended up compromising about 90% to our position. You know, Congress is about to shut down. Mm -hmm. The governor needed to avoid, you know, that kind of an image in Virginia, and so he was kind of boxed in. So they came to our side. We basically agreed to have a one-time refund of about eight or nine hundred million dollars. He's calling that tax relief. It's really just a refund. And there's only about maybe 60 or 80 million dollars of tax policy changes. We, uh, we raised the exemption for military pay. So if you're a retired military veteran, you don't have to pay in Virginia income tax at all anymore starting July 1. And uh, there was a couple other little changes, but K through 12 was really what we prioritized right. in terms of spending, and that's what we focused on. I want to talk about schools. Yeah, what are the changes there? Because that was very important, and I know that the governor will be on uh, Fox News Sunday in about uh, 15 minutes here talking about education in Virginia. But what are the changes within schools and the budget here? Yeah, the governor had only proposed in his budget to increase education spending on K through 12 by about 100 to $150 million. We actually got him, or we actually got the Republicans to agree to over a billion dollars of new money coming to our schools. The biggest change was about $400 million in direct aid, which is the money that goes right to our mm -hmm. school systems to pay for services. We also ended a recession era um, uh, policy that we had in place called the support cap, which is the amount of money the state pays for like support employees, for like guidance counselors, mental health counselors, um, nurses, and things like that. People that we really need post pandemic to help our kids get through what they're going through. We got rid of that policy. There's about a couple hundred million dollars for that. Um, and uh, we also have a big 2% uh, pay raise for teachers. Um, okay. So to in total now, we're going to have raised teacher pay in Virginia by about 12% over the last two years, which my caucus has been adamant that we need to get done. We talked about a lot of things, mental health funding. There are also changes there. There's more money coming to that. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, Virginia's mental health system is really on the, you know, it's, it's really on the rocks. We, we, um, we have a big bed shortage in, our, in, in Virginia. Um, you know, it's, it's hard to just get people services when they need them. This, we have uh, historic investments in mental health in this budget, probably about, I think it's about 140 million new dollars coming in. We actually need to put more in, but you can only put money in so fast. Mm -hmm. It takes a while to hire people and to build things to actually right, right. spend the money. But it's a big, huge, historic, actually historic investment in mental health is way overdue. So I understand you're, you're saying all the things that your caucus health passed, but this seems to me, that at least the way the governor presented it, that this was a bipartisan effort, uh, that everyone's on board with this, so we're expecting that he'll sign. I know you just mm -hmm. gave a little chuckle there. Uh, what, what, are you, what are you saying to that? Well, I mean, you know, the, the, governor was at, the governor has this addiction to tax cuts, and he, you know, we gave him some tax cuts last year. He came back and wanted even more, and we just can't keep cutting taxes. It's not prudent, and that was basically the whole up for the last six months, and the House Republican Caucus was taking the governor's position, um, and my caucus said, "No, we're not just going to keep cutting taxes. We have we have JLARC, um, our independent auditor, mm -hmm. found our schools are underfunded in Virginia by four billion dollars. We have the tenth highest per capita income in America, or mm -hmm. median family income in America, and our school spending is below the national average by fourteen percent. Mm -hmm. And so, from our perspective, it was very important for us to hold out for that K through twelve investment and to hold out against those tax cuts that the governor wanted because we just can't continue to keep cutting our government when we have all these needs and people demand high quality services in Virginia. And so, he frames this bipartisan, but he basically gave up when he saw that Congress is about to shut the government down. He doesn't want that visual in Virginia when he's trying to run for president, and we got elections going on in Virginia, and so he needed he needed to do something, and, and he basically came to our position. I want to switch gears and talk about something that 